call me five minutes into the board you tell me I have too many people I have too many people and he don't wanna because I'm telling hey please don't he, because I have too many people no, not into the ship he, he tell me he must have to enter the ship because we don't have other option because they have a dangerous people he must have to in because I don't I don't know but why but I think so he's face he say he face the criminal like uh, mafia anything for for why because they don't have any life jacket or nothing and and I'm searching and my day and but result I see is this the Greece don't help uh, the Then last night I don't have any option. I don't want to come. I want to come here for uh, uh, talk to survivors, but they they don't allow me. Uh, we are very. And Kirk, he is the one, I don't know if he's alive or not. This is a tragedy. The people have uh, survived the catastrophe. If you look at the number uh, of death and the magnitude of what they survived, it is awful what they have gone through. And it's clear that they are severely affected from the mental health point of view and also from the physical point of view. Uh, but the thing is that these six last days were the end of a very long journey in which the trauma and the level of trauma they were experiencing was even higher and the accounts we get from what they lived while waiting to board in Libya uh, are even sometimes awful from what they lived in the side the ship despite the awful conditions in which they were carried. I think pushbacks, disclosure of the borders, the externalization of the borders that we are putting in place in Europe are creating these bottlenecks, these bottlenecks where the people are stranded, that then they are victims of criminality, of uh, criminal networks that are the smugglers. These criminal networks are emergent, are, emer are emerging because because of these uh, bottlenecks, this is something we have to, and it's not only Libya, it's uh, all around Europe.